thanks everybody for joining today. We have a good group. And Kristen and myself are really excited to uh, talk to you all today. We've been waiting all year and working hard all year on a lot of things and uh, obviously sharing along the way, but it's always nice to have a wrap up and like a kind of look back and look ahead and really celebrate all of the innovation. So that's what we're gonna do with you today. Make sure you know of all the great stuff um, that, that came and is coming from Synchro going forward. First, uh, just a brief introduction. As Caitlin said, I'm the CEO of Synchro. I probably chatted with most, if uh, you know, a lot of you over time, um, but uh, I joined Synchro just over two years ago and I've been in the MSP space for much longer than that uh, prior prior to being at Synchro, but it was it's been really exciting uh, to see the evolution of the company, even in that two year period. And we've made a lot of changes, some of which we're gonna share with you today. Um, Kristen, you wanna say a few words too before we get started? Absolutely. Uh, hi, I'm Kristen Castaiola. Uh, I have been at Seagro just about a year and um, it's been a really fun year. A lot of things that we've gotten to do and, and I'm excited to share with you and also some future plans. Um, I love, we have a lot of things that we've done well. We also have some things we can continue to improve. So we'll talk about um, a number of those things. We also have um, some of the product team that is on the call. Um, so feel free to ask questions in the chat too. Um, Emily and I will try to take a bunch of questions as well um, throughout, but there'll also be other people answering. So um, yeah, feel free to put some things in. Yeah, I'm trying to follow all the screens, but you know, for, forgive us if we can't quite keep up. I'm sure someone will flag us, but yeah, we have some product help here today to answer questions. Love to get your questions. Uh, we also talked to some partners in advance. So the general flow today will be a look back on the innovations this year, a little bit of a look forward to 2024 and what you can expect from Synchro into next year, and then answering some of those questions that have either come in through the chat or you know we had collected some in advance too that we can we can talk through if if, if everybody's quiet, which I I don't. Um, okay. So let's get started. Um, first off, I know we have some folks here who are not Synchro partners yet. So I thought I'd just spend a little bit of time talking about like, what is Synchro? Uh, so if you don't know, or if you haven't tried and it's free to try, so I would encourage you to try if you haven't, um, Synchro is an all-in-one PSA, RMM and remote access platform. Uh, it is also uh, provides a marketplace of solutions. So if there are, things that you want to um, sell through or solutions you want to provide to your end clients um, through Synchro, you could take advantage of some of those integrations uh, and solutions directly through the platform as well. So we have a lot of uh, third-party vendors that we, we partner with um, to make sure that you can serve your end clients. And uh, we've talked a lot about like the breadth of the platform, but we have a lot of partners that trust us to help run their business. And we are serving nearly 5,000 MSPs worldwide today. So what we should cross that threshold here in the coming months. And we're really, really excited about that because we've been able to scale. We've had your support. We really appreciate that. Um, and it's been am amazing to see uh, our partners grow as the platform uh, has grown. Uh, we do provide lots of resources. Like I said, there's a free trial. I'm going to go through some of the stuff uh, that we've shipped this year to help MSPs kind of grow. But uh, there's a lot of that available on our website, too. So I encourage you to browse that. And then just to mention the pricing, because it's kind of unique, uh, we have per user pricing. So we also have month to month or annual options for you, but it's all per user pricing. And there are no uh, limits in terms of like the amount of endpoints that you can support with Synchro through that model. So we really want to partner with MSPs just getting started uh, who are looking for a tool that can really be predictable in terms of cost and provide all the functionality they need to, to run and grow their business. So that's just a little bit about Synchro. It would feel kind of weird just launching into roadmap stuff without saying at least some basic things about the platform. All right. So uh, our mission has been and is always to make life better for MSPs. Uh, we really want to work with you and support your goals for your business. And that's kind of the aim of everything we have ever done, <laughs> will ever do into the future. We are really here to serve MSPs. And going into 2023, I remember uh, we, we were doing some partner interviews, really putting some thought into our roadmap and our themes for the year. And it was really informed by those conversations with partners. So these are the three focus areas we had for 
last year or well this year it's already last in my mind uh, but uh, you know this past year so uh, firstly we focused um, on a consistent reliable experience we had been adding a lot of features to the platform Kristen's going to talk about a lot of the initiatives we had in this area but we wanted to make sure we maintained a secure platform that was performant and that you could count on to just work when you needed it to work. We know how hard it is when products don't work as you expect, you have to take time and energy. Uh, and we knew that there were some areas of the platform that we had to focus on to bring them up to the level where we were actually satisfied, but our partners as well were satisfied. We put a lot of hard work this year to, to make that um, a very reliable experience for you. Second theme was around uh, trusted essential solutions. This goes to the marketplace. We will talk about the specific solutions we launched this year, but we wanted to make sure that we had a place in the product, again, that was very tightly integrated that allowed you to manage solutions that you're providing to your clients. So that's the marketplace initiative. And then lastly, you know, our partners continue to grow as we are growing. And we had a lot of requests from partners with maybe bigger teams, or just uh, some advanced features and automation that they wanted to enable in their accounts. And we wanted to make sure that we were helping them grow and we were growing along with them. So there's a number of features we added to the platform to help support growing MSPs. Um, so those are kind of the three focus areas. We're gonna dive into the details, exactly what we did on the roadmap and from a product perspective on each front. And we'll even talk a little bit about some of the support initiatives too, because we know that that's really important to, to partners as well. Uh, before we get into those details, we are just going to acknowledge that um, Kristen and I didn't do <laughs> all of this alone. And you know, uh, Caitlin does a lot too, but not even just the three of us. There are many, many people behind the scenes, uh, both employees, partners that we get to meet in person or virtually uh, that work on all of the, the things that we're going to talk about today. So we are just here representing um, on their behalf, but we have to acknowledge kind of all the all the people that go into making this happen. Um, and we wanted to put together a few highlight uh, highlights of moments from this past year to kind of celebrate their accomplishments as well. Yeah, one of the great things about Synchro is Synchro is a fully remote company. So we have the opportunity to hire people all across the United States um, in any location, and we can find the best talent for really what we're looking for. Uh, you can see here, we have a lot of Zoom meetings um, and, and pictures together um, in Zoom meetings, especially around specific projects or um, in exciting moments uh, throughout the team. We do also have a lot of times that we want to get together in person um, and spend time uh, with partners and with each other. We recognize, you know, the value of seeing people in person, but there's, you know, uh, struggles with that as well for anyone that that has to travel or, or things that you might need to do. So we've spent a lot of time uh, within our team, but also in including partners. Um, so every year we have a internal conference called um, Octacon, where we do a lot of innovation and we get to, uh, we have a hackathon across the entire company and we've brought partners multiple years to do um, an activity with us and to answer questions and to talk about things that we want to do um, in the future. We've also um, gone to a number of events and gotten to meet a lot of you in person, which has been really exciting um, this last year, especially coming out of the pandemic and being able to travel more. So we've had um, an excellent time doing that and getting all of your feedback and being able to bring that into our product roadmap um, and in the way that we just do business with you in general. Yeah, so here, here are some photos of the team, some of our partners. Uh, our partners um, are growing, as I mentioned, too, and we've we've added over a thousand new partners to the platform in the last year. As Kristen mentioned, have been fortunate to meet meet with some of them in person or, or online as well. Um, and overall, our partners are growing. So we do look at stats for like our partner sizes, their revenue um, and marketplace adoption, for example, just to see like how are they taking advantage of the platform and how are they growing with Synchro? Um, and overall, um, everything is, you know, trending in the right direction. And the MSP market, as, as you know, uh, continues to grow. So there's just a ton of opportunity out there. We're really excited about that. Uh, so we had a lot of fun. Uh, uh, this past year, our partners grew, uh, but in support of this, we shipped a lot of stuff to make sure that that could happen. And we wanted to summarize 
the product innovation that we brought to the platform this year. So following along those three themes, uh, reliability, marketplace, and growth. We're going to touch on some of the highlights from the product roadmap perspective. You you may be aware of some of these, but maybe you missed, <laughs> missed some also. So this is a good recap of everything that we introduced this year on the platform. We're going to start with reliability experience. Yeah, and this one's a big, a, a core piece, I think, for us to start with. Um, when I got here, I heard from a lot of you, um, a lot of partners that I talked to in the community and the team about a lot of foundational things within our platform that that really needed focus. Um, and, you know, that our pace of development as a company kind of had slowed. Um, the team was doing the best that they could to deliver what partners needed, but um, we were struggling to scale, I think, to the um, the extent that we had in the last couple of years. So for myself, um, one of my first very big areas of focus was focusing on our, our process to make sure we were shipping quality features um, instead of you know a lot of smaller things uh, very, very quickly. Uh, we went into a, a lot of work in fixing some foundational things, which I'll talk about, uh, but we also um, were able to focus a lot on our platform that allowed us to speed up our development process. Uh, we've been able to improve our, our product delivery. We actually, over the last year, we solved double the amount of um, backlog of customer defects than we did in the previous year um, while continuing to maintain our pace um, with features and functionality. Um, and we had uh, half of the number of critical defects that were actually created over the last year. So while I, and I'm sure all of you would love those number, the number to be zero, you know, no defects. Um, you know, there's work still to do and we still have areas for improvement, but we've actually come a long way in the last year um, and have made some really big strides in our um, overall product delivery. Yeah, and it was important for us to take a moment and acknowledge that because we know that a lot of you joined Synchro or are looking at Synchro because uh, for, for the innovation and we have been sort of like an innovative platform and uh, we wanted to acknowledge that, you know, we had we had some struggles scaling that over the last little bit, but that's one of the reasons, you know, Kristen joined the team and a lot of the work that we've been putting in over the last year year or so is to get back on track there. But first we had to sort of stop, uh, take stock of where things were at and make some, some foundational changes that we're going to actually go through uh, right now in a bit more detail. So, so first up, um, in 2022, we talked a lot about um, our migration off of Heroku and into AWS um, when that project started. Uh, Synchro was built on the Heroku platform and at the size that we had gotten to, um, needed to be able to scale larger. And that involved a, a very large process of moving into AWS and modernizing a lot of our infrastructure. Uh, again, we spent a lot of time in 2022 as the project was ongoing, but uh, I, I look back at the year and realize we didn't really spend a bunch of time showing you the improvements that we've actually seen in the platform and how much benefit that you as partners are able to take from that. So I just pulled some three, gra three graphs um, comparing performance times um, and utilization within the app um, before and after the cutover. So you'll see Either it's depicted as a line in uh, the upper left and, and the lower graph um, as a line of when the cutover happened or in the upper, as in the upper right, uh, the red line is the future, like the amount of time and speed uh, that was responsive time compared to the blue, which was previous. So we saw on average um, like 50% improvements in our communication speeds between some of our different services. Um, and a lot of improved utilization within the infrastructure. We also were able to build a lot of scaling mechanisms um, into the infrastructure itself. So we were, were able to handle increased load uh, easily or potentially if there is an outage or if something needs, you know, if there's a disaster in AWS, we're able to scale appropriately and handle and mitigate those changes, which we had not been able to uh, previously. So this allowed us to really build a lot of foundational work. It was a lot of things our infrastructure team did a tremendous job on this over the last year. Uh, and now we, we have a scalable, reliable platform. We've done um, disaster recovery tests 
to make sure that we can continue, again, if AWS has an issue to go down. Uh, we've seen the impact on speeds on the user experience on the website, also on the mobile app. Um, and we've seen in, uh, in like better speeds for customers that are outside of the US with us leveraging Cloudflare and being able to use that um, to serve certain things on the edge that are much closer to you. So we've been able to, to create a lot of improvements on, on the platform itself, um, which are not features, but you do notice in every single click that you would have to do in interacting with the app. Awesome. Yeah. And Kristen and I, were, we were looking at this this morning um, and we realized, you know, we had talked a lot about this migration and obviously people see the impact, but we never really circled back and kind of talked about it. We were looking at these graphs and like, you know, should we should we show this? But I think, uh, you know, throughout this presentation, what we want to convey is like we, we do want to be transparent about the work that we've put in. Um, I think it's easy to go out there and say, trust us, it's better. Uh, so we really have tried throughout this presentation to provide data and, and backing to some of the improvements uh, because, um, you know, in that spirit of transparency. So I hope uh, I hope the transparency is helpful for folks. <laughs> And please feel free to ask questions if you have specifics um, uh, in as we're going forward. Um, the next big thing that, uh, you know, so aside from just our infrastructure platform side, um, I heard from a lot of partners of some longer standing things that that had struggled to scale as Synchro scaled um, and things that we really needed to look at. Um, and so I, we, we spent a lot of time in the engineering team to improve these and, and build them in a better way. So um, early in the year, we did some really big improvements on our script reliability, um, on our scripting system, our scheduled scripts, and on our invoice reliability. So initially, our, you know, our scripts, our scheduled scripts uh, went from a rate of, you know, a missed rate. So they were not firing around 15 to 20% to zero. Um, and it's been about zero. Our team has continued. We have alerting now built in, which did not exist previously. So anytime that there is a delay or latency, our team is able to immediately respond um, and fix anything that's going on within that system. We also um, evaluated our QuickBooks and our zero um, sync uh, that a lot of partners use to send invoices um, and to handle a lot of their accounting. Um, there was a, a lot of latency, especially on the first of the month with, with many of partners that have recurring invoices that are generated. Um, and we were able to reduce that sync latency from six and a half hours to um, most of them occurring in less than 30 minutes. Um, and we also worked very closely with the Zero uh, team to make sure that we could retry and we were not hitting API rate limits uh, so that we could increase success uh, with Zero and QuickBooks. I know that there is still a lot of work to do on our, our integration with QuickBooks and in our integration with Zero, and we, we're committed to continuing to work on that um, within into the next year. But this was a big uh, kind of foundational piece we needed to, to fix. Um, another area that that our engineering team focused a, a lot on was our scheduled reports. Um, we had heard from a lot of partners that the scheduled reports were very, uh, uh, they weren't firing uh, as reliably as people would want. So we actually did a pretty big uh, improvement onto that system and brought our reliability from 40 um, to 98% completion in that. You might be wondering, why is that not 100? Uh, why did you not get that last 2%? There is a couple of cases where either um, the email has been put in that's incorrect. All of that, that 2% of remaining scheduled reports are actually things that are mostly out of our control. Um, so bounces on the email that that their being, scheduled report is being delivered to or um, something specific within the data that, that someone input. So, um, that's why that's not 100%, but I just wanted to make sure to call that out, uh, that we would love it to be 100% and, and there's some reliance on usage there. Um, our rich text and email processing in general um, continue to be a very large focus for us. Um, I know that this has been something over the last year that has caused um, something you know, for partners, especially uh, expecting 
you you expect a lot from your ticketing. So I'm going to go into that in a minute as well. But we have made some large improvements on our rich text um, and our inbound email processing in general. It's very challenging to work with uh, different email providers, Google Chrome and uh, like Google and Microsoft. They act differently when they send HTML emails versus just plain text. So there is some complexity there that uh, just makes parsing and making sure that your view within the platform itself, within your ticket comments are actually readable and usable. Uh, we also completed SOC 2 uh, this year uh, after our move into AWS. And again, with a lot of the work on our infrastructure, it really helped us solidify our processes. We run disaster recovery tests, like I mentioned, to ensure minimal downtime. We have access control uh, to make sure that uh, that no one should have access to the data that they don't need. Um, and so this is something that, and especially coming out of Wes's session, um, I'm sure all of you are, are keenly aware of how important this is. So um, we have this report if any of you would need it, but it's, we really took it as a, as a chance to solidify a lot of our things and continue to build reliable experience um, within the app and within our company. Um, and then finally, uh, you can, Emily and I discussed, is this reliability? Is it, you know, how do you think of that? But um, the Synchro interface, we we focused a lot on our UI, UX, um, and workflow improvements throughout the app. Again, a lot of things in the past had been built very quickly and responding to a lot of customer feedback. And so there are some things that um, we can continue to do to make our, the, to reduce the clicks for your technicians and to make it so that you can see everything. So we did a lot on our ticketing page to um, expand so that you can view it on a full screen monitor instead of having it in um, in a smaller container. And so it's responsive and the same with the navigation. So we've been doing a lot of work and adding smaller things throughout the app to make your navigation and your workflows easier. And then just to, to finish off with some of the support experience aspects of this sort of consistent experience with Synchro, we know uh, support is a really, really important part of that experience. I wanted to, there's some new and there's some old here, but I just wanted to give a complete picture of all of the resources you have available to you from a support perspective. Uh, Again, so I, I continue to hear from partners. Uh, sometimes I don't know where it comes from. I'm like, we can't call Synchro. And I'm like, I don't know. So I wanted to take the opportunity to be very, very clear. You can call Synchro. There is phone support. Um, in fact, it's in the uh, header of our webpage. Uh, the number there, we also have a UK number. So we operate 24-5 from a support perspective, uh, Monday through Friday. Um, we are sometimes closed for major U.S. holidays. We always announce that in the app and in the community to make sure that people um, have proper expectations set there. Uh, you can reach us, like I said, through the phone. I feel like I need to say that a hundred times on this one. <laughs> I'm just trying to get through. Uh, you please call us. Uh, we also have chat. We also have a web like ticket portal, or you could email us. So there are many ways to reach us. Uh, we are here. Uh, we also are here even more because we extended support to Saturdays recently. So we do have business hour support from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. And we're looking to add some Sunday support too in the near future. So we're really trying to make sure that we get back to you quickly and that we are around, especially if there's a, an urgent issue or question. And um, we also had a, a new support leader start about a year ago who has been, number one, making sure that support is running smoothly, uh, introducing all of these innovations and making sure that we are getting back to our customers more quickly and improving that satisfaction. So uh, uh, faster response times is a big piece of making sure that folks are satisfied with support. And I'm uh, really pleased to say that we've made a huge uh, amount of progress on that front. We've done a number of things internally uh, on the support uh, workflow side to make sure that we can, you know, acknowledge new tickets and work them and get them to the right people more quickly, which has led to about a two hour response time for the majority of the tickets that are coming in through through online, through like email or through the portal. Obviously, if you call us or chat us, we will get back to you sooner than that. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the response time has improved significantly, which was a huge initiative of mine when I when I started here. And again, a, re a reason why um, we, we brought in a new support leader and have been focusing on this. So from a support perspective, 
uh, as I mentioned, please call us. Uh, on uh, Outside of support, we have a number of other resources to help you get started with Synchro or ask questions. So we do have online support in the form of a community forum. So you can chat with other, um, other users. You can chat with Synchro folks. You can follow along announcements. There's a bunch of different channels in there to, to engage with Synchro. It's also a good place to access the support chat. If you want to chat us uh, on an issue or a question that you're having with uh, the platform, um, you can access your partner support portal there as well. So you can log in, see all your tickets, uh, you know, reply to tickets, create a ticket, that kind of thing. Um, and we do have our knowledge base documents available as well there. So there's a full complement of everything you would expect, I think, to see from a support perspective. And then for product updates, um, you can follow along in the app. There is a product update feed. But we've also recently introduced product updates on the home page of the website or in the header. I guess it kind of follows you around. You can see that in the screenshot on this slide. But there's a link to click. Now, this is new, sort of in the last 30 days. Um, you can click that product updates link, and it will give you a feed of um, all of the recent releases and changes um, that we have, uh, ha have announced. Lastly, if you're just getting started with Synchro, so you're in your first sort of 90 day uh, or just sort of getting famil familiar maybe with a new part of the platform that you haven't explored before, we have a number of resources, including Synchro Academy with videos and content to help you learn about an area of the platform. We have weekly PSA and RMM implementation webinars. This is for folks who are really, really new. Um, it alternates one week it's PSA, one, one week it's RMM. And it gives you a, a guide of the best practices to follow when you're implementing um, either the PSA or the RMM. And then if you are a team plan partner, uh, it also comes with one-on-one -on -one guidance. If you have implementation questions or you're struggling with an area that you want to adopt and, or you want to know how do I, how should I you know, do this given my business, um, my, my considerations, we're happy to help you with those things as well. So there's a lot of different resources here, but I just I wanted to go through them because there is a lot and it can often uh, you know, be hard to find what you're looking for. We do want to make that easier going into next year. So making sure that there's kind of one central place people can go to get access to all these things is definitely a goal for next year and one that I'd like to see come to fruition. Uh, but for now, this is a good roundup. And please call us because we have phone support. <laughs> I just feel like I have to keep saying that. So that's uh, that's the reliability and experience piece. I think next we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the marketplace. I see a ton of questions. I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna assume somebody's moderating those and we'll get to the ones that are yeah. on slash answering those uh, and we'll get to unanswered ones or hot, hot ones at the end. Is that good? Is that a good assumption? Yeah, I think a bunch of questions. Thank you for using the Q&A function. Um, everyone that's using that will answer a a lot of them and any of that we're going to touch on later that will also say it in the in the message. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so on the marketplace front, um, we had a number of existing solutions in the App Center in the platform. I have a screenshot of the App Center so you can kind of locate it in your Synchro account if you haven't had a chance to browse it or look at it in the past. Uh, coming into the year, we had uh, a number of existing solutions for antivirus, uh, for, for remote access, and then for payment processing. Uh, but we wanted to expand this, especially on the security front and so, some of the, the basic pieces that um, our partners uh, have been asking for or were already using to kind of deliver solutions to their clients. So things that we added in the last like sort of 12 months include Acronis. Uh, which we recently relaunched with them and expanded to cover their whole entire product catalog. So anything that you want to look at from the product catalog, you can access that, create your account and provision um, within the, the App Center and Synchro. Proofpoint email security that came out earlier this year. Splashtop SOS, which is a way to, without an agent install, remotely support uh, anyone. And you're hopefully a client user needing help. And then lastly, a uh, comment backup, which just came out in, in the last week. Uh, and it has a, a deep integration with, with Synchro available too to provision and, and, uh, and, 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 and use it within Synchro. So those are all sort of exciting uh, solutions that we've added to the App Center this year. 
In addition, uh, you know, the screenshot shows where you can find it, but we've also made enhancements to the app center itself. As we keep adding things to it, we realized people needed a better way to like browse or search for the solutions. And so we've added some categories and the ability to search the app center to see if like your provider or there's a solution in a, a specific category to help you find what you're looking for there. Um, so uh, more to come here definitely next year. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, later, but um, a lot of focus on the marketplace this year, making sure that it was seamless to manage not only like your business, but the, the solutions you're providing to your clients. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about how we supported sort of the MSPs and the partners on our platform that were growing this year. They had a number of like specific feature demands uh, and needs as their businesses and teams specifically team sizes were growing. Yeah, uh, when I first got here, um, the biggest thing that I heard from like partners outside of foundational for feature requests and from our internal team was um, the need for additional PSA features for our growing teams. Um, and with that, a lot of the, uh, focus specifically as you're, when you're adopting the PSA ticketing is kind of the first piece of that. So that was a big area that we delved into this year, um, to make the ticketing, um, interactions, interface, all of the things easier, um, and have more functionality for our, uh, larger teams. So the first big things that we did around ticketing, improving the interface, again, expanding it so that it you can see all of the tickets, you can manage your views easier, uh, you can manage the views that your technicians uh, can see and can interact with, you can create them in pin specific ones so that you only have to view things that uh, that you are interested in and that you need to take action on. We know how important that is that your time and your technician's time is focused on the highest priority thing. So you can actually manage that specifically yourself. We also added a, we, we know we had custom fields that you could use previously, but uh, there are limitations to that and not necessarily things that uh, you could continue to build on. So we added a robust tagging system uh, across the app for use in automations. We started with uh, tags within tickets and customers, and you can use that to assign to specific views or to assign to technicians um, to make sure that your highest priority clients are able to be um, taken care of very, very quickly through, through your ticket automations. Uh, we're continuing to expand that tagging system, um, and we'll be looking to add contact tags so that if you have a CEO or a you know, particularly troublesome user or maybe someone that you want to put lower on the list, potentially. Like I'm you not offended. Tag... <laughs> I'm not offended. I'm just like Sorry. Yo and troublesome user in the same. I list. didn't say that they were the same thing. Right. Those are different. <laughs> um, but if you have those, you can actually respond to them uh, quickly and, and, you know, manage those differently maybe than you would uh, the rest uh, the rest of the company. So maybe you need to urgently respond to to certain users. Maybe it's a a more technical savvy person you want to send to your level two technician. So um, you're going to have those options. So we're continuing to build on that, but we built this tagging system to be able to expand to these other areas uh, within the platform. So we can continue to, to build on the automations within the ticketing system. We talked uh, a little bit about uh, rich text previously, but um, you know, we, we understand like ticketing is uh, the way that you interact with your customers. And so uh, this has deepened our um, understanding and kind of experience around how important ticketing is for all of you in running your business. We obviously know that from our support side that we care tremendously about how we interact with all of you when you need help. And, and we know that you build your um, you build your business on the way that you interact with your customers. And that's why they continue to come back to you. So the ability to offer rich text communications and um, see screenshots in line and exactly um, HTML emails we know are in, we know is important and the way that you can come across to your clients as being more professional and, and interaction is better. So uh, we're continuing to focus on that and, and making that ticketing system as robust as possible. The second kind of big area for growing team is you know we launched our team plan. And uh, the team plan, you know, 
there there were some things that I think we could have continued to improve um, on that side. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But there was a lot of features within that uh, around larger teams that need, you know, increased and enhanced automation or um, enhanced features that they're looking for. So things like Azure AD sync and being able to sync all of your um, customers and their end users directly into Synchro from their Microsoft Azure accounts, focusing on real-time ticket created um, automations. So uh, doing, being able to do, uh, assign a technician automatically when a tech when a ticket is created based on a tag or based on something else within the system priority or putting it into a specific view so that they can action it. Um, enhanced splash top, so having multiple technicians um, and uh, uh, enhanced splash top on that side. Uh, we also added ticket view management so you can control what your technicians are able to see um, and what uh, boards they're able to actually view so that you can control their work. Uh, we added some Power BI, a Power BI template that will pull that exports a lot of data from your specific Synchro instance um, and keeps that up to date. And you're able to actually run reports, export things to PDF. It can give you a greater view. We're continuing to expand on that. Um, and for anyone that's using it, we always love feedback from any of the different things to making sure that we can provide reporting and capabilities that, that you're really looking for. And then finally, we added um, database exports specifically for you know, security purposes of people that might need to move their data out or for reporting and, and for them to look at all of the data within their, their specific Synchro instance um, and be able to run reports on it or store it if, if you so need, though we do keep all of our data um, extremely secure um, within our side. And then finally, uh, we did a lot of things throughout the year for all different types of, of partners, but um, we added a, a number of new reports uh, within the platform that you can actually run specifically like directly within the platform that give you access to utilization um, or things around your customers uh, and, and you'll be able to access all of that. Sounds good. I'm, I was browsing the, the questions that are coming in and the answers. First of all, the product team is doing an awesome job answering all the questions. I love it. Um, and we're getting some really great questions from, from the folks in the audience. So uh, it's 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 kind of distracting because I want I want to go, oh, that's a good one. We should answer that. But they're getting taken care of. So we'll, we'll get to the Q&A. Maybe I'll pull some of the, the good ones out or we'll reiterate some of them. But um, it's great yeah, to see just the interaction. Just as a note, Aaron, I uh, I love that suggestion. I think there's a lot of like the way we built our tag system um, is really to be able to continue to expand it throughout the platform. Um, so would love to see that, and and we'll make sure that on the product side we we continue to look at that. Awesome. And then we'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about um, the other resources outside of the product features that we uh, worked on this year to help growing MSPs. So again, I bring up the website because we have a resource hub there with a lot of different blog posts, guides, webinars, you know, past and upcoming as the case may be, reports to help. You can filter, you can search, whatever you want to do uh, to help you grow your business. And this is, you know, sort of free of charge, just out there available for people to take advantage of. So if there's a topic you're interested in learning more about, uh, I, I direct you there. Uh, on the left, I just have a few of the resources we've published this year or recently. Um, so we did at the beginning of the year release uh, an events guide of where you could find Synchro. Uh, this year, we will be doing the same as we head into next year because we will be hitting the road again. Looking forward to see many, many of you out there at some of the conferences. Um, we released a resources and communities guide again was earlier in the year, uh, just around some popular references. I think Wes's name definitely comes up and a lot of the speakers we have today come up on that, which is why they're here uh, to share their knowledge with you again. Uh, we also released a pricing report recently. I love it because it has this one uh, page with very juicy details about like the average price per user or an endpoint or whatever that that the respondents are charging for their services, which I, I love the, the, the dirt. Um, and then lastly, we also announced a partnership with Ch Channel Program and launched a MSP technology map in the last month. And this is a comprehensive overview of 
over 600 companies providing services to MSPs, and this is going to continue to grow. So I know it's probably not perfect, uh, probably not 100% complete, but year over year, we will update this, and it'll be interesting to see sort of who enters, who maybe leaves uh, the chart, um, and what, what names become recognizable, stay recognizable. There's definitely a sizable cybersecurity section of this map that you can browse, and um, we just thought it would be a wonderful resource for folks who are looking for solutions, but maybe don't even know like what the options are, especially there's always so many new vendors entering the space and launching new solutions that it's hard, hard to keep up sometimes. So this is a good visual way just to get a sense of like, who else should I be considering or like what else is out there? Um, this gives you a quick, a quick reference for that. So um, just some things I wanted to highlight, but again, all of that is available on the, the resource hub of the website. And I see Caitlin's sharing some good links for us too, if you want to go directly to some of those reports. So thank you. I found the technology map just as a note, like the technology map is really, really cool. And there's so many things there. Um, it's amazing to see how many companies there are really across the channel and how many options that all of you have um, to be able to offer your clients. Yeah, definitely growing. Lots of interest. So yeah, go go give it a browse because even I, there's like, I don't know, out of the 600, maybe <laughs> I got a good amount, but I'm like, what? And what is that? And a lot of octopus logos. I'm going to have to look into that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, on the security front, well, we have to we have to cover this too because we did um, along with the AWS migration focus a lot just on platform stability in the form of like security initiatives, Kristen. Yeah, uh, security, you know, uh, your RMM is... Uh, something that you need to keep incredibly secure. Uh, I have seen personally uh, things happen to, to customers that have had their RMM compromised and how painful that can be for your business. And so being able to keep your RMM and your PSA secure, this is what you run your entire business on. And we recognize that. And it is of the utmost importance for us to be able to provide you with a very secure um, interface to make sure that you are safe and that your customers are safe. So uh, with that, again, we undertook uh, SOC 2 compliance this last year uh, and we're able to achieve that. We also are going into type two next year. So we'll have that report for anyone that, that would need. Thankfully, uh, there wasn't changes that were needed on our side, but it allowed us to just continue to take a look at our security posture as a company and make sure that we're doing the right things to keep everything secure for you. Uh, we also have been focusing on some security features for you to keep your own house safe. Uh, a lot of the MSPs that I've talked to, security is the thing that keeps them up at night. It's the thing that they're the most worried about because it is the thing uh, that can change your business entirely. So we uh, just released IP allow list uh, for all users. We had previously had it, but excluding global admins, um, now you're able to to take advantage of that across your entire user base, and you're able to lock down your integrations if you want. Uh, we also improved it so that you can use CIDR notation specifically, so you can block very large um, sets, you know, sets of IP addresses, things for VPNs or for integration providers that you might use. Uh, you can take advantage of that. All of that's in the knowledge base, uh, and you can check all of that out. You can turn it on or off for users or for uh, your integrations, whichever you would prefer. We also are in early access for our single sign-on uh, for anyone to use your existing OpenID uh, Connect provider solution. So that could be Azure, uh, well, what is it now? It's Microsoft Entra ID because they keep changing the names of everything. Uh, you can use Google, you can use Okta. Uh, we did we have heard feedback, but we have kept this and I'll and I'll talk about it for something specific because I think it is important um, that we have kept Synchro's MFA, um, additional MFA, even if you have uh, your OpenID Connect, your SSO uh, connected. And the reason we've done that is because, again, no one is safe from a breach and and your RMM is the most critical piece. If someone is able to take over your RMM, they're able to do a lot of nefarious things to your customers. And so we wanna make sure that that's as secure as possible. We're gonna continue to evaluate 
what is the line of making sure that you are the most secure within our platform, but also that are not impacted by having to, you know, MFA over and over. But what we've seen is even companies like Okta, LastPass, 1Password, these are companies that focus their entire product on security and everything they've done, and and they are not um, immune to breaches. So we are going to continue to do that and make sure that all of you are safe. We have some improvements that we're going to continue to talk about, and there are things that we may not we may not do MFA on login, but maybe it's on um, specific actions, you know, around running scripts or something. But SSO is in early access. Everyone can take advantage of it right now if you do not use the mobile app. We're currently working on improvements to the mobile app to support SSO. Uh, so if you do enable SSO within your account, you won't be able to you won't be able to log in via the mobile app. So if you do use the mobile app often, know that that is, that is coming in early 2024, but uh, it's still in progress, but we wanted to make sure that it was in everyone's hands. Awesome. So I think that is that concludes kind of the year in review, although we do have some stuff in progress right now that's coming soon that we're going to cover uh, just coming up here. But that kind of covers what we've announced so far this year. Uh, lots of great stuff. Obviously, we appreciate our partner support throughout the entire year partnering with us. Um, and we know that apart from all the things that we delivered, there's still more opportunity to make sure that partners are in the loop. Uh, both, you know, sort of prepared for what's coming and also aware once it's here, you know, of all the ways to take advantage of it and, um, you know, are, are ready to do that. So we do have a focus going into next year of continuing to improve on that communication and that feedback loop, uh, especially with our product team, to make sure that we are preparing you adequately for what's coming um, and then, um, you know, taking feedback and being really responsive there. So, um Moving on to 2024 with the last like eight minutes here. Uh, here's a little bit about what to expect from us um, and our some of our key themes. So yes, reliability continues to be a focus for us. You know, that's around the product, the stability, the scalability, the security, and that support experience. So continue to expect us to uh, to refine that experience for our partners. It's kind of a core tenant now, I would guess. So part of this work will never be done, um, but uh, we still uh, we still want to continue to focus on that for next year. So that's a key theme. The second one is uh, we're going to continue to release features for the PSA. Kristen touched on, you know, how important and critical that is for our partners. Uh, we still have a number of features, and I can tell a lot of the ones that people are chatting in the Q&A actually have to do with the PSA. Uh, so, you know, you know what they are. Uh, that we have a number of things we want to add to the PSA, especially, uh, you know, to make it easier to run your business, but also to make every phase of that, including sort of like invoicing, accounting and payments, even more sort of painless. Uh, we can't we can't kind of eliminate accounting pain entirely, but we could do our best to make sure that those things are as seamless um, and easy to use as possible. And we also know that partners that kind of adopt the full breadth of the platform and use all those things in concert, achieve more efficiency and are more successful overall because things aren't slipping through the cracks. There's less time to manage it involved. So we want to make sure that the options we're providing are serving your business. Um, and we know we have some work to do there. So Chris is going to um, talk a little bit about that. Um, and then lastly, you know, continue to simplify on the security front. Uh, this is security of the platform, which we talked a lot about, um, you know, the improvements and the, the investments we've made in 2023 on security, but we want to go even farther. Uh, I mentioned the channel technology map has like a fractured space in terms of cybersecurity. There are a lot of options out there. It's a lot to manage. It's a lot to even keep up with. And uh, I think that Synchro has a really good opportunity to simplify that for our partners and make sure that we are bringing solutions to you and making that adoption as easy as possible as well. And, and for, for yourselves to protect your business, but also to protect your end clients. So we have a number of uh, innovations planned on the security front heading into next year as well. I'll let Kristen cover a bit more detail about the roadmap, about what to expect kind of this month um, and going into next year. Yeah, so we have a lot of great stuff uh, where, again, SSO is in early access. We are continuing our releases on ticketing. And so we'll have some Ticket View Health Metrics performance, 
performance metrics that you'll be able to see across your different ticket views that should be released this year. And you'll be able to see that either, you know, on a per ticket view basis or overall uh, within the team plan and comparing all of your different views to see things like average first response time, how many tickets are, you know, need attention. So there's a lot there that that you'll be able to take advantage of actually very shortly. Some of those final things are are wrapping up right now. In early, they're in flight right now, but we'll expect to release them in, in Q1. So early 2024, probably early January is um, hardware security keys. So you'll be able to use instead of MFA token wise, you'll be able to use hardware security keys. We did web auth end, so you can use, you know, any YubiKey or Google Titan key as well as your, you know, fingerprint scanner on your laptop. So that can make MFA even easier and more secure and, and not allowed uh, for people to inject anything there. We'll also be rolling out compromised password detection. So something that will tell you if any of the passwords that you've, you're have you logging in with have been um, detected within a breach. And so you'll be able to take advantage of that uh, to know if you know you maybe you should change your passwords specifically. And then a big feature that we've heard from a lot of people is expanding on our single customer permissions. So right now, if you have a co-managed IT uh, situation or you just want to give access to a single customer, you're able to do that within, within the Synchro interface. And we'll be expanding that so you can include multiple customers within that and, and manage security groups if you have specific areas of focus. Uh, looking into 2024, a lot of themes, uh, we are going to be expanding our payment providers. So I saw that that was a question that came in around Stripe ACH. We're looking actually broader than just one single uh, vendor and have a number that we're going to be uh, hopefully releasing early in 2024 for all of you to take advantage of so that you can use uh, whatever payment provider you might you might leverage right now. Uh, also, again, going back to some foundational things, email deliverability and making sure that the way you interact with your customers comes across as professional as possible. We'll be focusing on some big areas, email deliverability, QuickBooks, invoicing, those type of things. We'll be working on dashboards and continued workflow improvements. We hear that a lot from partners. So please continue to send us your feedback on that. And then we've talked a lot about security for our house, but it's just as important. You heard this from Wes as he was talking about it, your security solutions that you're going to sell. And Emily mentioned that. So new managed security solutions directly within the Synchro platform that um, will help you grow your business and making that as easy as possible within Synchro. Just a few things. Piece of cake. Um, I see a lot of uh, chatter about MFA and security in the in the chat, and the questions continue to pour in. Um, at this yeah. point, we, oh, you want to add something? No, go for it. Okay, I was just gonna say at this point we're gonna transition to Q and A. Obviously, that's been flowing in the background really well. Uh, so hopefully, people have been following along, and maybe somebody else asked and and you got your question answered too. Um, I think. Uh, some of the, I, I've kind of taken some notes of some I want to highlight, maybe Kristen, we have a few we could just kind of like reiterate live um, or, um, you know, some we got in advance to that we might want to cover. One that's coming to mind is, you know, we talked about having more transparency with partners, uh, preparing them more for what's coming. Uh, I, and we have had in the past a lot of partners ask us for a roadmap uh, that's published somewhere. Um, so maybe you want to talk a little bit about what we plan to do uh, with that next year. Yeah. And I saw a question around kind of like the team plan and and some of the pieces there. So, uh, you know, I will be the first to acknowledge that I think there's a lot we could have done better around messaging and preparing our partners and talk, you know, we talked about features, but we, we didn't do a very good job, I think, of messaging that broadly. And that's something that I am looking to really focus on into next year is, is improving that for all of you. You should know what's coming and you should have a clear thing. Uh, within this last year, we did priority posts within the community, specifically to talk about the things that we would be working on each quarter so that you could come in and see as a recap of kind of what we did the previous quarter and then what you can look forward to in the next quarter. But uh, we would like easier ways for that for all of you to access that information. So we're gonna, we're rethinking and, and gonna be launching something in January for everyone that will have a 
very clear uh, road, you know, quarterly priority roadmap or things that are in progress for you to look at to see what's what we're working on um, and how you can provide feedback. Uh, we're also continuing to, you know, understand that and, and making sure that we hear from all of you that we're working on the right things and that we're solving the highest problems uh, that you might have. I'm going to throw another one at you. We probably have time for like one or two. Go for it. Little, Go for we're it. going a little into people's like let out the dog break, but whatever. Um, actually, Justin just uh, helped me here in the Q and A. He's asking about sort of net. It sounds like network discovery uh, potentially uh, there. Um, asking for a friend of his, I hear, uh, and and if that's in the works. We have a lot of things that are under uh, investigation, I would say, across the board within the product team. So, Justin, um, if network discovery is something that's, you know, really, or network probe is something that you're really interested in, um, please reach out to us, product at synchromsp.com. We'd love to talk to you um, and figure out exactly. Uh, and that this goes for a lot of people, you know, please feel free to send feedback on the community forum and in a number of different ways. But would love to talk to you about, about options there. Yeah, and I saw a question around project management and how to manage maybe tickets that don't have SLAs applied or you know, how, to, how to do that in Synchro or would we enhance Synchro to help with project management? I think that falls kind of in a similar bucket where, you know, under investigation and we'd love to learn more about how we could help help there. Um, anything else that you want to get to in the last minute, Kristen, that we didn't cover or any question that you wanted to like pick up on and, and emphasize for folks? I think uh, for me, the biggest thing that I want to emphasize is that, you know, this last year for myself was a big learning experience of, uh, you know, taking a lot from all of partners and hearing from all of you about where is the important things, what do we need to work on, and how can we help simplify your lives, and also trying to build in a process to continue our engineering teams, um, you know, velocity and ways that we can deliver features for you. And so the biggest thing that I would want to say is that well, we did a lot of work this year. There's a lot of things, but we have a lot more of exciting things to talk about next year. And I'm so, uh, I, I hope that all of you will continue to to work with us and, and talk about all of the things you're excited for and see the things that our engineering and product team will be able to deliver because uh, we're really building a lot more momentum and you'll see a lot of the efforts I think that were put in behind the scenes this year um, really materialize going into next year uh, in a lot of the things that we'll be able to deliver. Yeah, I hope partners could see how excited we were with what we got done this year and what's coming next year. So thank you everybody for attending today. Really appreciate your time. Lots of great questions, uh, very much on topic, very like lo love to see the feedback. I want to wish everybody sort of happy holidays and please stay tuned and enjoy the rest of the grow workshop today and, and day two tomorrow. We hope that uh, it, it it's very, really beneficial for everyone and gives you a lot of good information and ideas to help power your business next year too.